Um, so um, very quickly about the operations. Not much happens day to day. When the people, we're going to have a few people either on site, off site, or a combination of the two, um, contract who you know know how to do this, that are basically going to be looking out for problems. They're not going to be doing much during the day. The panels produce power. They're going to be there to communicate with OPD if, if something arises, and survey and repair the electric equipment as necessary. Check the wires. Make sure everything is being checked on a routine basis so that it, you know it, there's oversight. But day to day, there's not a lot to do to make it work. What really needs to happen is the longer term. And so one of the things people will ask about this is, is water usage because of the washing. And we think this is on the order of about one additional house in Virgin Valley water, the, the usage according to what Virgin Valley published for its average residential use for when we, if we decide to wash it. If we don't decide to wash it and we'll let the rains do it, then we, don't, we, we use almost no water. Drinking, drinking cups for the people in the, in the, uh, in the operation shed. It's not, there's not much, there's, not, there's no water use in actual operations. It's just in, in, in water and in, the, in, the, in any washing, that, you know, which would be only to optimize the performance. <coughs> um, so the next page is, uh, very quickly, that's what sunrise and sunset look like in the ski. Um, that's daylight savings that's causing that strange bump. Generally, on, on from 7 to 4, most times and more in the, in the summer, the note that the front, the, the shoulders at the very edge, there's not a lot of power that you get at sunrise or sunset because it's so low to the horizon, you go into a lot more atmosphere, and it's hard to track it properly. So in the last 15 to 30 minutes of the day, the power rating is going to be very low relative to the, the normal. But during the major part of the day, during the rest of the day, if, if it's sunny, the power rating should be very close to, to the full, say, 40 megawatts or whatever the size, the full size of the day. Um, and so this is actually... Lots of numbers. Don't worry about all the numbers because we're not going to have nearly enough time to go through all of them. But what you can see is that in the 10 to 1 from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. part of the day, over the year, the average expected, but this is looking back at the meteorological records over a long period of time, is about 90%. In the in the May June, it's almost 95%. Meaning that you're at full power, you're at full power on a 30 month day, 28 days out of the year, and you're probably close to full power, you know, 90%. You know, you're, you're, you're not a very big reduction during that period of time. What you do see is that your rate of power is much lower in the morning and the evening because you're starting to go towards that sunset. You're starting to go towards the, the, the part of the day where you can't track and you can't be exactly perpendicular to, to the sun. It gets harder. And then and what you also see is in the winter, the, 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 the uh, performance is lower because it rains more, it's cloudy more, and, the, and it's just also simply darker more. Um, so you know this is a this is a relatively you, know, you have one of the best solar um, radiation sites in the United States, and this is extraordinarily high relative to whether you're building in Fresno or someplace else. This is a, this is very very high. I think it's like ten percent more than Fresno. So when you see people building plants there, you know it's actually even better here. So this is the estimated output, and I showed both single and dual axis. Note that the cost difference is negligible between the two. So as part of this is getting the, the sculpting right between um, for what OPD needs in a, in a power profile. But you'll see that the, the maximum is in April, May, June. Um, it's also high in, in July, August, September. And then it sort of falls off at the, in, the, in, the, in the winter months. Um, 110,000 megawatt hours for the single axis, 122,000. This is based on the 40 megawatt um, it's full size. The, um, so you can get 10% more with the dual axis for basically no additional cost, which you know, provided it fits the power profile, we think is a good idea. It obviously lowers the overall cost of energy. Um, but so this is the profile, and this is you know you'll you'll see this you know, 122,000 megawatt hours. I guess is about 30% uh, of the total year for for OTB. I got one more slide. So one way to think about this is a hypothetical break-even cost looking at APS or whatever comes after it, at today's price of 62.40, and we can, we can debate all night, and I don't think it's useful to debate exactly what number is going there, but this is meant to be a hypothetical and a, and a big, big way to think about it, is you're going to have lower, you're going to have cheaper off-peak power, you're going to have cheaper solar, and that's the top price that we're showing there, and you're going to have to buy additional daytime power. You're going to buy that daytime power mostly in the winter, when it's more cloudy, more rainy. You're going to buy it mostly on the rainy days in the in the summer, you're going to buy it basically when other people are not seeking power, right? The hot, the hot time in July this year when people were, you know, the prices spiked, 
that's going to be when you're running, you know, sunny and you're going to be running nearly 100%. So you're buying power at when people generally are not looking to, 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 you know, not looking to maximize their power prices. And so your, your, your break even price should be a lot higher on those few hours that you have to buy power when it's sunny and hot and you're, you're actually trying to make it up. But what this shows is that, you know, if you assume th these, these numbers, if you need about probably $240 price on a break even for backup, Right now, you know, need is at 40 for a peak. I don't think that you're going to need to necessarily spend 240, and that's where the savings comes in. It's that fact that your break even is so high relative to anything you can possibly imagine. I think at the moment, the spike was 100 dollars, if I remember correctly, at need around around July 4th. So that was 100. That was the spike for the year. And that would have been, been just a few hours. That's the average price of the entire year for backing up the solar. So it's much higher for what you would need during the summertime. So there's a lot of money. To, there's a lot of money to be saved because your break even is is much much higher than any consumer price that you would look at right now in the market. So I just want to summarize by saying, you know, this is we're, we're looking at building something that's very modular, very you know built out of reliable tested uh, um, products. It's not we're not trying to look at the the new wave. And there are better things from uh, you know in this coming out of the labs. Some are they're great. I'd love to build them, but I don't want to build them for somebody. And, and then be responsible for, hmm, I wonder if that actually works. We're looking at things that are coming from, the, you know, coming from people that built them. If you look at the, everything that's being built in Nevada, the, you know, the K-Road project down in the lap, but that's, that single axis tracking, uh, 250 megawatts, they're just starting to build it. You know, they're, 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 almost everything that's built nowadays that's big is tracking because it's much cheaper. Um, so th that's, that has been well tested. There were problems with it 10 years ago. Everything has problems when it's starting to be to be to be implemented. You, you can always find a story of something, but a lot has changed in that time. And you know the whole the whole project is we're looking at things that are that are not brand new. We're not looking at bleeding edge, if you will. Um, this is reliable. We hope we can find a way to make the the prepay thing work for for because that's as I said, it's another five to ten percent cheaper. And you know we really think this is a good project for for Overton. It does a lot with for which risk mitigation as well as sort of as cost savings. So and with that I'll take any questions you might have. I got a question. Um, so if we do this, this commits over to the power district for how many years with the PBA? That depends. Um, that probably depends on what we're um, what we negotiate. Uh, it depends on what structure we use. If we went to the the, the prepay where Overton is more directly involved, I think it could be as short as 15 years. Um, if there is, if it's the other, if it's the other form, I think it would be 20 to 25. But you have to remember, is the, one of the things, when you look at it at natural gas right now, imagine when you, when you renegotiate in your natural gas contract in, in 2012, you hit actually the bottom of the market, right? But no one would have given you a 20-year contract in natural gas because there's so much uncertainty. I know exactly what the price of solar fuel is going to be today, tomorrow, and 20 years from now. It's zero. So you're, you know, you're locking up a fuel price contract that is certain. It's not going any lower and it's not going any higher. So the difference is you couldn't do that even at the low end of the market in natural gas. As a matter of fact, and you, you, you embedded in your contract is the optionality, is the uncertainty about how high it was going to actually be in the, in the five years to follow, not just the spot price. And so we're looking at, we're, we're basically paying for the capital. And from our point of view, and from the person who's going to invest in this as the tax equity investor, there has to be a minimum length because they have to know that the facility is going to be paid for and that it's going to be taken care of. Um, so their minimum is going to be 10 years. I don't think you, you will have seen a contract that's shorter than that. I've, I've seen a few 15s, but generally those are subsidized by renewable energy credits in other states where the, 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 the state is chipping in money. There's nothing in here for renewable energy credits. We're not getting any, there's no subsidies in that way. So. Um, generally, you know, somehow it's front end loaded. Um, New Jersey or Massachusetts or some of the other states on each where they have a lot of subsidies. Well,